Right, good morning. What you're doing? Good morning. Okay, so here is our dentalized software in the center. Um, obviously, double clicking that software will open the interface. Um, the system will give you uh, ways of searching for your patient. As you can see, these um, different parameters patient ID, last name, first name, sex, home phone. Um, we generally use um, very little of that information. Um, because our management software has that info. And if you can see below here in our patient dropdown, um, all the patients in our recent history are there. And the big thing that steps out to us is the patient um, specific ID and Avamar for what we use. So it makes it easier for us to go right to that patient, especially in multiple patient um, households. Um, for today, we're gonna create a new patient. And by doing so, we'll just hit patient and new. Um, the information that is required is patient ID, patient first name, and last name. Um, I do put sexes in there uh, because it is technically a human-based software in terms of that type of information. Um, it doesn't ask for spayed and neutered. And again, I think all this information is quite redundant because it's in our management software. And the only thing we're really using the software for is acquiring the image and storing the image before it goes somewhere else. So. Um, today we'll make a vet core uh, test skull. We'll call the skull a male. And if we want to put a date of birth in there, we can. There's a drop down um, that makes it pretty easy to do so. Once that information is, and you can obviously put this other information in every now and then if there is a specific reason why we're radiographing that mouth um, like a tumor or a missing tooth or a fracture or a suspected abscess um, we will use the comment bar there and often we'll put the responsible doctor there but uh, once we hit okay that patient is now added into the database and now we can choose um, our uh, template system and uh, by hitting image and show template now this will bring up um, the same bite wing FMX chart that 99% of the, the competing softwares and radiographs will have. Um, the biggest thing here is that we can um, see molars, premolars, canine right upper, incisors, incisors. They're all pre labeled for us. If you wanted them to say something different, if your office is totally stuck, on the triadan numbering system and you wanted to stick to the 104 204 304 305 whatever um, these are very easily editable um, to me the software is literally just a tool to acquire those images i don't use a lot of other bells and whistles in there on a daily basis however whatever your druthers are in terms of these acquisition um, parameters um, they can be set very easily um, the only thing I'll, other thing I'll, I'll point out is if you can see here, um, the sensor is plugged in and once the sensor is plugged in, you'll see that it is active. Um, the software will work with multiple uh, image devices, whether it be multiple sensor sizes, whether it be an intraoral camera, um, a direct USB uh, um, webcam or something like that. Um, that can all be loaded in the software and you will see multiple actives for multiple devices. Um, if I wanted to shut the device down, all I need to do is click it to, to shut it down. Um, now it's idle. I click it again. Um, it will reinitialize itself and now again we are active. Um, the other thing to note is that the sequential order of the acquisition is set for us in sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, etc. Um, this is just a default um, order. Um, this order can be time to your preference as well. Um, you are also not stuck in following the order. So for instance, if we wanted to start off with this patient by shooting maxillary incisors, which is generally where we start um, because it's the first thing that we come to kind of thing, um, what we'll do is I'll just highlight the image bank that I want to use for those uh, incisors and if you notice um, the image banks that are labeled upper right canine left upper canine and incisors are all in a vertical view as opposed to the cheek side premolars banks that are all in a, a horizontal view and that makes a lot of sense for image viewing in a little while um, so since I have selected that um, central vertical position for the incisors upper 
I will now grab my generator, select the appropriate time exposure setting, uh, place my sensor in the mouth, point and shoot. Um, and you'll see that active button go to busy here in just a second once it recognizes the radiation. Um, it will now transfer that radiation to pixels and make it sense here in just a sec. And there's our image quality. Um, the other thing I'll point out about when we are acquiring, a double click on that image at any time during the acquisition phase um, will bring up the image. And then it also is another great thing to point out in comparison to other softwares is that other softwares, you have all these, these windows and things to click in order to get to that editing ability. If you notice here, your toolbar is right there. So all the things that we need for contrast and lighting, inverting colors, flipping the image, it's all very, very uh, centrally located for you to get to. Um, if there was a slight acquisition, or excuse me, slight um, uh, density or, or problem with your um, settings on your radiographs and you were undershooting it or overshooting it, um, by cliff, left clicking and dragging on the image, we can adjust that contrast, gamma, and lightning, et cetera, uh, just by dragging that mouse around. So an almost perfect image can be tweaked to a perfect image very quickly without changing the original image quality. Um, we can always go back to the default image at any time um, so that way we're dealing with the raw image. Uh, when we're finished with that, if you see here, we just click back to our image card. Now we're ready for further acquisition. We can either follow, and we'll start a little sequence here by going to number one, just how it will progress itself. Um, so I'll place my sensor in for that particular um, view. I will take my generator to the appropriate setting again, and we'll try a shot. Now what we'll do is show you the progression of the automatic sequence that is set for us. Um, so once it's finished with acquiring sequence one, it will jump to the sequence two. I have a little movement there, as you can see, but um, now it's ready for the second shot. Now I can make the appropriate adjustments on the generator, shoot the second shot, and continue to walk around the patient's mouth um, in that sequence without having to tell the computer anything. Um, this is often what I do, and I kind of look up after I've shot everything to realize what mistakes we have made, where we do need to make a little correction. Um, so for instance, in this particular shot, because of the cone cut here that I've missed the sensor a little bit, um, the a sensor couldn't expose properly all the way through. So we'll make some slight adjustments to that image to bring it to where we want to, despite the cone cut that you see there. Um, and we can continue on. Um, in terms of um, Sending these images anywhere at any time from the image tab, we can select import or export. That goes for um, if we want to get clinical pictures in. Um, so if we wanted to import an image, we would click import, um, select the path and where we are going to find that image. Let me see if I have anything interesting to bring in here. Um, we can select the image, okay. And as you can see, that image is not only uh, manipulatable and positionable, uh, we can do a lot of the same things we do to our radiographs with the same editing quality. Um, these can also be stored in um, the same bank as the radiographs, so you can have your clinical and um, radiograph at the same area. Uh, in terms of exporting, the same deal goes there, export. We can choose to send a, a um, thumbnail, if you will, of the, con con the current uh, image card layout, which will be small little pictures, all in one series, kind of laid out, as you can see behind us. Um, or, excuse me, let me shut off my... Um, as you can see that um, we can use that, uh, the whole card, or we can use just the specific uh, images in the card. Um, in this case, I'll just show them on the desktop just so we can see them go. Um, they will default as a JPEG, and you can see they're living here now, DE2, DE3. Um, usually what we do, we'll, we'll use a uh, folder for the patient on the desktop uh, labeled with their information, um, and that is what's shared back to Avamark. Um, Avamark usually only will receive um, a finished report at the end of the day and all the 
uh, images that we store are stored um, in our dental clients folders where it um, makes it easy for us to keep records of our PDFs. Um, and the PDF is also, and I'll give you an example of that PDF here. Let me find a good one. <laughs> so these uh, post radiographs uh, and clinical photographs can be put together in a nice compilation, uh, which I'll be more than happy to share with you guys um, if the time comes. So this is the end result the client gets when we are finished. And then after uh, going anywhere, as you can see that our tests and everything will will be right there. So if there was a, a for instance, in the first thing in the day, our technicians will usually put all of our dental clients in the system before we get started. Um, so all I have to do when I'm ready to jump to the next patient is literally click the next one and go to that specific patient. Um, once we have multiple um, image visits for the patient, they will all be in chronological order stored here on the left in our image card uh, section. Um, and any time by selecting that image card within that area, um, we'll bring that up. Um, other than that, printability, it's all pretty much there for you. And I think one of the biggest things to point out about the software is that you're not having to go back and forth through separate windows and in order to continue on with your acquisition. Um, and at any time, you can start a new image card by show template and we're right ready to start a new image card. Um, so there's no messing around. It's really very easy that the system can sit um, dormant like this, active, waiting for acquisition for quite some time. Um, so you're not having to really worry about of having to reinitialize or reset anything in order for us to continue on. Um, so um, you'll find that all the annotations and or image manipulation um, tools are the same as any other softwares out there. They're all very similar in terms of that. Um, we do have DICOM compatibility for the larger corporate offices who do need to share information with a cloud and or a backup uh, uh, system to make sure that it gets back where it needs to go. Um, other than that, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and I think unless, Andy, you have any uh, specifics that I did not cover or anything you can see that uh, I missed some information that could be necessary? What I wanted to see, Kevin, is if you have to reshoot an image, like when you were showing that image card before, it had two images in that sequence one, I think. Is that, is those two images, Correct. Those sequence one, it wasn't sequence one and two? Yeah, and one of the interesting things that I like about the image card, for instance, is when I, here, let me show you an example. Um, if we shoot multiple shots in this one area, and I'll go to incisors just to make it simple for us real quick. So let's say we shoot five or six shots in the one spot. Um, if we shoot them in a different bank, like let's say I'm shooting in sequence five right now. If I shot the sequence five and then sequence six, sequence seven, they're all gonna be stored or assigned to that sequence. So in this particular instance, I'm gonna shoot five and then I'll shoot five again. And what you'll see is one will get stored in the sequence spot. The other one will, will, will shoot down below in like a secondary database for now. Um, and what this does is we'll store them there because they're not assigned for now. Um, but you'll see too, once we do get out of the image card and come back, um, they'll kind of be floating over one another. Give me one sec and I'll show you that. Number two, you see the first one we took is now labeled number one. It still has our date and, and it pushed the one out of the sequence. So if we go to the other image card, for instance, and then come back to the image card that we were just in stopping our acquisition phase, one will be stored here, one will be stored in like the, the accessory area. These guys can be positioned and um, there's a way to change their size too. There it is. At any time. So if you do have just one or two images that you're comparing, 
you can continue to set this up for just the comparison of those two shots. Um, so at any time, um, they will all be in a manner that you can kind of see where they were taken, why they were taken. And they all can also be manipulated from here too. So if there's any contrast lighting, there's no separate windows that you would need to do in order to um, change those qualities. Okay, thank you very much. My pleasure. Um, hopefully it's enough information for you guys. Okay. Thank you.